While wicked lords and witches fay on hapless folk with hate did pray, the maidens fair and angels bright fill this long tale with hope and light. Hey everyone, this is James from Brewing Books. Welcome to another video installment. So today is World Poetry Day. This time I'll be doing something different. As you may or probably may not have heard, I have written a book and published it. First in paperback and now in a sparkling hardback edition. So Hastingas is a 4,000 line epic poem on the last Anglo-Saxon king of England. And in honor of World Poetry Day, here's what happened. So back in October 2016, I had an idea to write a novel about the historical Battle of Hastings, which took place in England in 1066. It was a pivotal moment in the country's history which saw the end of the last Anglo-Saxon king. Harold, King of England, received news of an attack by Norse invaders in the north of England in September 1066. Harold summoned his army and marched north to Yorkshire, travelling a staggering 185 miles in just four days. There he fought against the Norse king at the Battle of Stamford Bridge and was victorious. But uh, news soon reached King Harold that William, the Duke of Normandy, or modern day France, had landed on England's southern shores. So the king and his army marched back south and faced William and his forces on 14th October 1066 near Hastings. The battle was fierce and bitterly contested until the Anglo-Saxon forces were defeated. Harold was slain and William the Conqueror became King of England. So all that was going to go in my novel, somehow. But I wanted to give it a different twist, whilst trying to stay true to the events as they took place, I wanted to add some new characters, motivations and perhaps the odd dragon and woodland fairy here and there too. So 950 years later after the Battle of Hastings, I began sketching down the opening scenes of the novel, which I wanted to call Hastingas, this being the Anglo-Saxon word for Hastings. But after a few paragraphs I stopped, something had happened. Perhaps a change in taste or direction. It's no secret that I'm a big, big Tolkien fan. And having read and fallen in love with uh, several of his poetic works, I began to devise a structure in which my story could be told as a long poem. I had obviously read epic works such as Dante's Divine Comedy, Beowulf, The Odyssey, and I always admired the discipline of a poem, the restrictive aspect of a line and the rhythmic nature of verses. So I decided Hasting Us would be a long epic poem. How long? I had no idea, but I knew from the start it had to have a rather symmetrical structure with an opening, three separate sections and a closing. I always knew ever since I began sketching out the first drafts in prose form that my main character would be Leofwyn Godwinson, who was the brother of uh, King Harold who would follow the events from the battles of Stamford Bridge and Hastings through his eyes and experiences. So I began to write my verses. Now, dear readers, you need to be aware that although I love reading poetry and writing it, I use the term poet for myself in very, very broad terms. I felt I learned so much with the restrictions poetry offered. So I continued writing verses, more and more and more. It was a long and arduous process, but I enjoyed it so much. There's a sense of pleasure and wonder when you go back to reread a stanza or a specific set of verses and feel the words and understand what is being said. That's the best reward for any writer, when your writing makes sense. So composing line after line, I soon reached my 1000 verse mark. 1000 became 2, 2 became 3. Until on December 31st, 2018, over two years since I began my writing quest, I had completed the first draft of Hastingas, clocking in at around 4,000 lines. It was a massive undertaking and a wonderful achievement. What a way to end 2018. And then 2019 began, and the first six months were dedicated to revising, rewriting and editing the manuscript fit for publication. The beautiful artwork was designed by Sarah, who's a fantastic illustrator, and her design simply elevated the book to another level. From the early stages of writing, I knew I wanted to self-publish the book. Listen, I know that history is not to everyone's liking, and poetry, <laughs> even less. So when I decided to create a deadly combination of history and poetry, I knew there was no scenario in which well-known publishers fought against each other to get access to publish my book. 
I had uh, been researching Amazon's Creative Space platform, which by the time I finished writing the book had become KDP Publishing. It was actually a surprisingly easy process and the result was quite satisfactory. And on November 2nd, 2019 was the day Hasting Us was published on paperback and as an ebook. It was fantastic, I had published my own epic poem. Fast forward over a year later, with virtually no reviews or reactions to the book, and I got an opportunity to transform the paperback into a hardback edition. Steve from MX Publishing, who have supported my previous Sherlock Holmes publications, came up with the idea of launching a crowdfunding campaign to print a hardback version. And while the campaign was running, I went back to the original manuscript and tweaked it a bit, revising the text, rearranging the notes at the end of the book, adding some more illustrations to the book, and adding a new short poem entitled The Atheling, or The Prince. And that became this. The result is magnificent and I can't wait for readers to get their own copy when the book is released this coming May. That is, of course, if Anglo-Saxon history dabbed with fantasy in poetic form by a non-poet is your kind of thing. So here's a short excerpt from one of the six cantos which form part of the entire poem of Hastingus. The verses have been selected to give you a feel and a taste of the actual content of the poem, so I hope you enjoy. As both armies each other faced, their shields held firm for battle braced, swords gripped tightly, spears thrust forward, yet no horn blew nor call they heard, in staunch resolve two bulwarks kneeled, Fierce eyes now leered between each shield. Wicked Norsemen eyed Saxon brave, Their foes' frail souls they would deprave. Odin's ravens lusted to slay Wessex wyvern, her close of day. While both armies did not engage, Leofwin's wrath once more did rage, As he descried his own brother, grinning in sin of a traitor. From wall broke he at foe to get, Towards Tostig his gaze was set. The twelve Hastingas at his back, while girth the young no urge did lack. Thus Leofwin, his sword held high, jumped over shields with mighty cry. Heedless of hurt, the lines he broke, of steadfast men with sure death stroke. The Saxons clashed and hacked and clove, and through the Norsemen sweeping drove. The two forces fought furiously, both sides' prowess earned gloriously. The onslaught raged till sun westered, as will thus waned and wounds festered. Like demons screamed the hordes from hell, as heathens suffered, swift they fell. The battered hasting us bellowed, amid the clash war cries echoed. No mortal eyes had yet beheld how feeble man his own kin felled. With shields they pushed and swords they hacked, while spears they thrust as shield war cracked. Yet onwards came the Saxons stout, while staunch Norse ranks turned to wear out. And that is how I wrote and published an epic poem book. I'd like to thank all those who have supported me along the way, especially those individuals who have backed the crowdfunding campaign. Thanks a lot to you too for sticking to the end of this video. If you're interested in purchasing a copy of Hasting Us, there are links down below to the paperback and ebook versions, as well as a link to the hardback edition. If you're not interested, thanks just the same. I hope that this video has inspired you to write and publish your own books. And until then, I'll see you next time. Cheers.